Hello, good morning everybody. It is such a good morning. I have waited a year, <laughs> a year just for this day, but 10 years of life given by Michael Beauville. Today's a very special day. A lot of good things going on here. Um, I'm joined by my co-host, Senator David Carlucci. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing awesome. Good morning, everyone, and happy anniversary to Roxanne. And mm -hmm. uh, this is a great day. Yes, it absolutely is. Uh, we've been doing this countdown for a year now to this 10-year anniversary. And uh, it's, it, it's been some journey. A lot of you know the journey, and uh, we're going to go over a few things today, but we're not going to dwell on the past. We're going to dwell. We're going on to the future. Um, it's, it's, I'm going to try not to be too emotional today. <laughs> I'm going to try hard, but uh, this, is, uh, this is really, really special. We say it every week, but it's really, really special. I'm going to be joined by some great people today, obviously. I'm very honored to have Senator Carlucci here with me. And my donor dad is going to call. Is that him, Steve? My donor dad just got on the line. And uh, Mark Juddelson is going to be here, too. He's the uh, author of Michael's Legacy, a, a new book that everybody's asking about. It. It's coming out like within a week or two here. And you'll be able to get this, the whole story of... Uh, Michael get Michael's story because you often get my story, but you don't get his and so that's why we have uh, John Beauville here today uh, Johnny you there? Yes, sir. How are you? <laughs> How's it going? Good. So I, good to be with you guys. I know we're giving you a workout boy every five minutes There's some media chasing you this week. <laughs> oh, that's just wonderful to get the word out <clears throat> is just uh, the way to go Yeah Yeah and, and um, so we don't even know where to start. There's just so much. First, we want you to tell us about Michael. How about that? That's a good place to start. Sure. Uh, well, he was uh, our first of, of four. Mm -hmm. And uh, what a joy. Uh, um, I, I don't think there's anything greater uh, excitement for a dad to have a baby boy mm -hmm. and uh to, to start out that way it was just a, a beautiful way to start um our our um venture in in parenting okay uh and then we had four uh, three girls after mm -hmm. uh but michael was he, he was just a sweet kid even as a little baby mm -hmm. um i remember sleeping through the night uh at an early age and never really gave us trouble and uh he was just an awesome little kid uh, had fun growing up with him. I was young. Mm -hmm. I was uh, 23 when I had him, so wow. I was a ball of fire and, and played with him. And you know, I, I think I had the footballs and the baseballs and everything before he even came out. So <laughs> <laughs> ready for that boy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I just had so many wonderful good memories mm -hmm. uh, uh, growing up, uh, coaching little league with him and hanging out with him. And then we joined the ministry in 1998. <clears throat> he was probably around uh, 14 or so. Okay. Um, and he just jumped right in along with us and helped out with construction. We started homeschooling because of the uh, um, the ministry time frame. It wasn't anything against public schools at all because I'm all for public schools. Okay. Uh, but homeschooling was was just uh, it just worked for our family. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he got a really cool uh, education. Uh, homeschooled in, in the morning, uh, actually, you know, the, the, the mathematics and everything. And then in the afternoons, he mm -hmm. would uh, hang out with the maintenance guys and uh, the different people at, at the uh, resorts and camps that I worked at. Mm -hmm. So uh, he, he had a, a construct. That's where your your love for construction <laughs> came in. Because he hung out at the Home Depots and he hung out with oh. the maintenance guys. And uh, we, we built an addition on, on one of the houses we lived in and, and uh uh, the Ozark Mountains, and uh, what a cool way to live. Mm -hmm. um, but beautiful. he also went to had a love for being a fireman, yes. I think even as a little kid. Uh, I think his first uh, word was a truck. I know. Uh, Mom excited. told us that story. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah, so uh, he loved uh, fire fire trucks and uh, wanted to be a fireman, so uh, he went off to a, a college uh, in Pocahontas, Arkansas, mm -hmm. uh, fire science school, and graduated two years later. In the meantime, we had moved to New Jersey, so he def definitely wanted to come back to New Jersey with us to be a family. He loved family. He loved his his uh, girls, uh, his sisters, yeah, and uh, especially sisters. his mom. He had a unique relationship with his mother. Mm -hmm. 
So that was really cool. But uh, yeah, he moved back uh, to to uh, to New Jersey with us. Uh, found out that it's so difficult in, in North Jersey, as you probably guys know in New York, uh, to, to to become a fireman. Absolutely. So he said um, a nephew invited him to be a part of the Coast Guard. Mm-hmm. He was a uh, at the time uh, working as a as a uh, mechanic for helicopters. Uh, but his main goal was was uh, I think his rate was even fireman. Mm-hmm. So it was really cool how everything worked out. Yeah. And uh, and again, and and that's. That's when uh, we got that tragic phone call. Mm-hmm. What it, I mean, I'm, I don't even want to say what it was like. It was it's like a horror. Well, you know, um, I, I think you always think of well, it'll never happen to us. It always happens to that family or mm. this family. Yeah. Right. But when it hit home, wow, it was it, it was devastating. It, you know, I, I, how do you explain uh, something that just rocks your world and you know, two o'clock in the morning, you get a phone, you, you get a phone call and, and say, we're doing everything we can for your son, mm-hmm. uh, but you need to get to the hospital. And uh, we made our way to the Harlem Hospital on the 15th floor, and uh, um, that's where that's where we got the news that the neurosurgeon said there's very little that they could do uh, the next day. It was mm-hmm. on a Sunday night. He was home for the weekend right. uh, from leave. He was in the Coast Guard at this time. Uh, he, he, he any time off that he would just love to come home and hang out with uh, his sisters and his family and his friends. Uh, he was plugged into church and uh, things like that. So he loved to come home. Mm-hmm. And he was heading back on a Sunday night um, uh, to Eaton's Neck in, in uh, Long Island. And he had to cross over the George Washington Bridge. Uh, he was on his motorcycle. He was, you know, totally safe. He had his leather jacket, his boots, mm-hmm. and everything like yeah. that, his backpack. Uh, something went wrong. Mm-hmm. We really don't know. They did an investigation. Uh, it was more than likely a hit and run. Right. Uh, his his bike went down the road, and where the divider is on the other other, you know, as you enter into the New York. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, he hit the barrier, mm-hmm. and his bike went down the road. So his bike didn't get little damage, but he did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cracked his helmet and and uh, had uh, serious brain uh, trauma. Mm-hmm. So he, we all met up at the hospital, and. Uh, the next day on Monday, they did do a, uh, a procedure of, of trying to, to, to relieve some uh, pressure from his from his brain. Mm-hmm. Um, the doctors really didn't give us a lot of hope. He said, well, we're going to do everything possible so there is no doubt right. uh, in our minds that we have done everything we possibly could. Mm-hmm. And I think either uh, Tuesday morning, I, I think uh, the uh, Live on New York uh, people approached us Right. And again, I think we've said this before in unison. Say it again. My wife and I (laughs) both said, absolutely, this is what he would have wanted. Mm -hmm. And they were so respectful. That's got to be a very difficult um, job thing for them to do, to approach a a grieving um, family members uh, with with a with a lost or soon to be lost loved one. Mm -hmm. Uh, That 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 takes a very uh, unique person right to be absolutely. able to approach that with dignity and respect and and, and honor um but th- that's what it was it, they were they didn't make us feel uncomfortable it was really about education and you were talking about that the other day about we we're just ignorant of it we just don't know yeah. and when they approached us we really didn't know the details of what that looks like to donate an organ mm-hmm. and how many people can actually save how many one person can actually save mm-hmm so it was it was so powerful to to really uh, learn and and understand uh, what was that all about. I, I even had a, a, a someone ask me a question. Well, well, do they feel anything when they when they when they harvest the? How do you know what they're they're actually passed away? Or how mm-hmm. do you know? Do they feel anything when they harvest the organs? Mm-hmm. And I think the answer would be, oh, absolutely no. They they would not do anything without. The, the state of uh, whatever they're in to declare them, right. and then once it's declared, it, it's just the machines keeping their their body functioning. Yeah. I'm glad you so said the organs that. don't don't perish. Is that correct? Yes, because so many people will see a person on a ventilator or something, and they see their their you know chest rising and and falling sure. and thinking that they're still alive and they're breathing, but no, it's the machine. Mm. It's absolutely correct. the machine. That's yeah. And you know what's good to hear that you were treated, you know, you were treated with such respect by Live On New York. Oh, 
they really were. They were they were top notch professional. They and are. and again, the, the relationship that we have now is such a, a beautiful thing. So much compassion and understanding mm-hmm. and and just love. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a tough. Hey, John, it's Senator David Carlucci. Thank you so much for, for sharing with us today. And uh, I know we've met uh, before over at Roxanne's house, and I'm just so grateful for your support of Roxanne and all gotcha. she's doing. And it's I, I was going to ask, and you really you shared that about uh, what your experience was with organ donation uh, prior to... Um, giving the permission to for sure. M- Michael's organs, and that's that's really interesting. So really, you you hadn't had conversations. You really didn't know much about it, um, if I understand you correctly. Yes, sir. Thank you, Senator, and all that you do, and that you support Roxanne and and this movement. Thank you so kindly for all that you do, and what a pleasure it was to meet you in person. Yes, thank uh, you. Yes, that that is true. We we uh, really didn't understand the depth of what organ donation was. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Other than yeah, okay, we're you know when you when you get old and you pass away, you may be able to donate your organs, and and what does that look like? Mm-hmm. But until they sat down and really took the time to explain in detail, uh, and and I think more so for us, it was, wow, the, the especially a young life. Unfortunately, I know this was a tragedy. I know we were in grief, but I was uh, um, mindful enough to know that he wanted to continue to give life. To others, mm. his, he dedicated his life to save people mm-hmm. as a fireman in the Coast Guard and, and whatnot. And and I, I, we just knew that this was the right thing to do, but we weren't really sure how to go about that and what it meant and mm-hmm. and how many people he could actually save. Right. And then, my goodness, a year later, we got we we, we got to meet <laughs> the, the four of the five uh, recipients. That, that that's unheard of. And uh, knowing the fact, we are so blessed. So blessed, mm-hmm. and I know, and I'm so sorry for parents who have a loved one that that have has has you know they lost and they don't have that opportunity. But yeah. just know that if they were organ donations, life continues to give life. Absolutely, mm-hmm. it's a beautiful thing, and and, and, and as many of you guys might know or yeah. do know that uh, we 11 months. It was really 11 months almost to the day that uh, our friend Miss Oprah found us yeah <laughs> and we always like to say we got to meet our donor family in front of a small crowd of 14 million people <laughs> oh that was such an it incredible was. day oh god i still i'm getting the uh, what do you call the goosebumps right now every time when I we walked out on stage thing, roxanne and i was we saw shocked you, i couldn't i couldn't help but embrace you and <laughs> hug you it was it was just the most fascinating it was it was uh, one of the best days beautiful. of my life it really was to meet you guys and not know that we were meeting you. We have so we have a few calls already. Right, the whole the board is full. So okay, we're full. So we're going to take some of these calls. John, I want sure. you to stay on the whole time, okay? Ed Day, good morning. Good morning, Steve. Hey, Ed. Hey, how Roxanne. Doing? How we doing? We are doing fabulous. We are ten years old today. Happy anniversary. Thank you so hey, much. I want I wanted to make sure I called in and just wish you the best and and just really I really thank you for everything you've been doing on and on the uh, organ donation front. You've been a I always called you the one woman wrecking crew when it comes <laughs> to getting donations. <laughs> Tell everybody who you are because a lot oh. of our people are from all over the world. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> this is this is this is Governor Mario Cuomo, Andrew Cuomo. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is County Executive Ed Day. I figured they'd notice my Brooklyn accent by now. <laughs> but I just, I just, well, you, you've been an, you're an amazing woman. You've done such, such phenomenal work in this Thank area. I remember you. meeting you for the first time way back when we were at Rockland Lake State Park and we were yes. trying to get electronic donations approved. Mm, uh, and Doug Jobson and I, we were in the legislature at the time. We, we put a resolution in to support some state legislation, and it went through. Mm-hmm. And there were so many people along the way that, uh, you know, were there for us and, and are no longer with us anymore. Tara, yeah. for example, what a sweetheart of a lady. Yeah, and Paul. Uh, she, she battled against CCF um, yep. uh, for so many years. She did. But, um, you know, just just an amazing bunch of people, and uh, blessed to know all of you. And I just want to call and just Thank acknowledge you. a very special day today. And um, Thank you so I love much. you, and we'll, uh, you. we'll see each other again soon as usual. Yep. Thank you so much, Ed, for calling in. All right. My county executive. Awesome. And who's there now? Hello? Are you there? Uh, I'm with you. Oh, that's John. Okay. We got anybody else, Steve? Okay. Who else is out here? Hello? It's Mark Shuttleson. Hey, Mark. How you doing? 
Hey, what an exciting day. How huh? about that? Is this awesome or what? <laughs> hey, Mark, glad awesome. to have you. Mark, tell everybody who you are and what you do. <laughs> about four years ago, I met Roxanne for uh, an article that I was writing for one of the county newspapers, and that <clears throat> opened the door to um, this whole picture of organ donation and the whole story of Michael and all of the recipients that he's, whose lives he saved. <clears throat> and after the article was published, uh, I asked Roxanne's permission to talk with Michael's parents. She put me in touch with Live On New York, so then I talked with John and Jelaine, then I talked with Michael's sister, then I talked with his um, Coast Guard friends and commanders, the station commander, the, <coughs> the admiral, uh, his roommate, and then through Live on New York started interviewing the organ recipients, their families, their clergy members, their friends. And a book is about to be available called Michael's Legacy, Transcending Life and Death, that incorporates all the pictures from these 27 individuals whose lives were touched by Michael. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when are we going to be um, released? Do we know yet? The book should be um, in hand at the publishers within a week or two. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, available through their website, which is mascot, M A S C O T books mm -hmm. dot com. Um, and that's available within one or two weeks after the, the books are actually at the publishers. Nice. I have a uh, hundred copies myself uh, within a week or two. Nice. Because everybody's asking, so you will put all that information on my Facebook page? Would that be good, Mark? Sure, I'll do that. Okay, because there's a lot of people that are not here in New York that are our followers and friends, and everybody's asking, when's the book? When's the book? We, we Yeah, our family's asking as well, <laughs> so that would be wonderful. Thank you, Mark, and, and your dedication to this and story. The cover is, uh, incredible. Of photograph of Rock. Oh, the cover is amazing. Photograph. We put that up on Facebook. That cover is amazing. Thanks to Colette Fournier for her uh, beautiful picture there and I mean it's just we'll, we'll post it again today because it, it the cover is just fabulous and I know what's in there is good too <laughs> and Mark it's Senator David Carlucci thanks for joining us today and thanks for writing this book I'm really looking forward to reading it what would you say what are some of the key takeaways that you really felt were uh, pivotal throughout the throughout the story it's a great question thank you David one of the pictures is that it seems to be a book about organ donation, but I think the overriding picture of the book, the overriding theme of the book, has to do with kindness and love, hmm. and that it was that that kindness and love is, was manifested by these 27 people in very different, unique, individual ways. Um, from Michael's parents. The generosity of John and Jelaine was mm. overwhelming. Absolutely. Asking them to go into some very painful places oh. where they <clears throat> were willing to go and open and share their stories mm -hmm. um, with the organ recipients, including Roxanne and Kellen. And, and then to hear from, for instance, the Roxanne's cardiologist, whose name is Julia Shin, said, I, I need to maintain um, an emotional distance from my patients, otherwise it would become overwhelming. But when I met Roxanne, I loved her so much that I told my colleagues, because I know that we have the same blood type, that if I died, I wanted my heart to go to Roxanne. Oh, Jesus. Oh. Wow, that's powerful. Oh, Jesus. Okay, I said I wasn't going to cry today. Mm. <laughs> mm, that's powerful. And then mm. the, cardi the, the cardiovascular surgeon, Dr. David D'Alessandro, who actually did the transplant, mm -hmm. I was describing the process of transplanting a heart from one person to another. 
as he was telling me about it, the hair on the back of my neck was standing up. It was so awe-inspiring to hear this story. is so dynamic and powerful. And I asked him, does magic or beauty or awe play a role in the work that you do? And he said, no. And I said, I was disappointed by that. And he said, my job is to as impeccably, technically, perfectly perform these very intricate tasks. And if I was distracted by beauty or magic or awe in the midst of that, it would interfere with the work that I need to be doing as technically, perfectly as I possibly can. Hmm. I thought that was a that was a unique statement of objective love and mm -hmm. play. Great guy, he is now the head of the transplant department in uh, in Boston. Gen I think Boston General, just amazing surgeon, just amazing guy. I know the day that uh, he came to me and spoke to me, when it was when they were kind of sure but not positive, he came and sat down on the side of my bed and said, uh, you know. Are you ready for your new life? Mm -hmm. I remember mm -hmm. that. I just remember that. And I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I had been in that hospital at that point almost, it was 104 days altogether, wow. but it was 78 days when he came to me and said that. And I said, yep, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. And he says, all right, let's do it. And walked out and that was it. Next time I saw him was in, uh, um, in the operating room with a whole crowd of people. <laughs> mm. There were 18 Ro people in there. Roxanne, room. didn't didn't he say that it was almost like a perfect fit? He said that he dropped it in and before he finished sewing, it was beating. Wow. Absolutely. Wow. He he said it mm. was. And they were worried because uh because Michael was physically so much bigger than I was and at that point I was 95 pounds. So wow. Wow. they were really worried that it wasn't going to fit. But he said my my old heart was like a football. Hmm. He said it was so bad it was gigantic, and that Michael's heart was able to fit perfectly right in there. You know what's amazing to think of now? It's a decade later, yeah. and how there's been so many advancements in yeah. technology and medicine, and think about how the the procedure yeah. itself, the technology that the surgeons have available has mm -hmm. become oh. uh, even more, uh, it's been become easier. Right. Um, and that's what reminds me about the, the real cause that, that you have in mm -hmm. signing people up, because yeah. as we see the, the advancements in modern medicine are just amazing, mm -hmm. but yet we're still seeing about 20 people pass every away day. every day it's waiting. Terrible. Um, the technology is there. Mm -hmm. the, the resources are there. It's just people being cognizant of the fact of signing up to be an organ donor still lags far yeah. behind. And that's what we need. That's why we do the work that we do. Yeah. We're going to take another. I mean, we the, the, the whole board is lit up here. Thank you, guys. We're going to try to start taking as many as we can take. We good to go, Steve? Got a lot of people on the line. <laughs> I, I hope people who are, who are on hold don't uh, are not offended about what I'm going to do. But I think this lady needs to go next. Okay. All right. Hello. Who's this? Hello, Roxanne. Yes. Hi, it's Donna Gorman Silberman oh, from the County Clerk's Office. How, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm calling to wish you a happy <laughs> anniversary. Thank you. Thank you. Is this exciting or what? This is very <laughs> exciting. Very exciting. I, I, <laughs> you you want to hold her because I, the, the lady that I wanted to come on. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think I may have pressed the wrong button. Okay. <laughs> Let me no, no, no. Can stay there, Donna. Stay there. But I think we have her. Go ahead. Yeah. Hello? Roxanne? Yes. Hi, Roxanne. It's Marissa. Oh, it's my sister. <laughs> Hi. How are you doing? I'm good. Happy anniversary, Thank dear. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I have, like, I'm sitting here with Senator Carlucci, and I've got good Hey, Marissa. Spots. How are you doing? Hi, Senator. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Thanks for calling. Good. Good. Thanks. Is my dad on the line, too? Yep. Yes, I am. Hi, honey. <laughs> Hi, Dad. How are you? <laughs> Where are you, Marissa? Uh, I'm in Colorado. Colorado. I'm in Colorado. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you want to say about your also, brother today? Uh, I just want to say that you, uh, you really sparked his memory, and 
his heart is still living on because of you and we're just so happy yeah. we're so happy that you get to share life with him and and he's and healthy and, he's so yeah. healthy i got great checkups the last <laughs> two weeks everything is perfect and i mean the, do- the doctors are just so happy and i'm happy obviously but we're taking good care of michael oh good that's so nice to hear mm-hmm. wow are you still in new york yes i'm in the same exact place didn't go oh, anywhere good. i'm in the same place oh, good. yeah that's amazing and we just travel everywhere that. I, was listening, I was listening to um mark earlier and mm-hmm. that was really special yes i can't um, wait I know. I'm so excited. I, uh, I, I can't wait to look on Facebook. I, I want to see the cover again. I don't know if I I'm saw gonna, I'm going to put it before. up and go home. I'm going to put it up again today so people can awesome. see it. You got That's it. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Michael was so special, and uh, we're so happy that you get to carry that on and and live through that. So we're so happy. Thank um, you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for calling early in yeah, the morning. Yeah, thank you, Marissa. <laughs> oh, you're so mm-hmm. welcome. All we right. wouldn't miss hey, it in the world. Yeah, I love you guys. I love you, Dad. Thank, thank you so much, Senator. Oh, thank Rock you, Dan. honey. You guys are so sweet. You got it. Thanks, honey. Yeah. Love you, everybody. Love you, too. Right back. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Yeah, that's the, that's the family that Michael came from. He, he just loved his sisters, and it, it, you can tell that just the love of our family, and that is uh, that's a wonderful gift. Yeah. I think that's the best gift that God ever gave us. Hmm. Is Donna still there? I'm still here. Donna, we really miss paul oh i know we do too mm-hmm. and i know he would be on this phone call right oh, now he would be oh, here yeah. in the studio oh, with okay <laughs> senator Carlucci. all of us would hi be here. senator hey, how are Donna, you i'm doing great i'm doing great thanks for calling and you're so it's so true we got to really um you know step into paul's footsteps Absolutely. and Absolutely. continue that legacy and i know you're doing a great job oh, there holding you. down the fort thank um, you mm-hmm. but that was the thing you know it's like uh, that's where a lot of the ideas came from mm-hmm. was just yeah. you know taking the things, the routine things that are done at the county clerk's office and seeing, hey, how can we add value to this? Right. Mm-hmm. I know I met Lauren Shields uh. at a naturalization ceremony nine years ago. Yeah. yeah. And that's where sure. we yep. got uh, Lauren's Law going. Yeah, and uh, that was the best And thing. all the, you know, with and that's with when I Tara, met you. And we met at that as well. And it's the facilitator. So it's, you know, you never know where you can use those opportunities to mm-hmm. bridge that. And I think about all the people that Roxanne and Tara and Mike Pendergast um, have have communicated to all the the new naturalized citizens in our yep. community. Right. The best thing we do. You probably yep. talked to thousands of people over the oh, past easy. decade. It just in that that facility, you know, mm-hmm. just in that that setting. So, um, just all those opportunities. It's mm-hmm. uh, great to take advantage of that. Yeah, you worked really. You did a really nice, uh, good work with the, the whole heart, uh, organ donation. Yes. And Roxanne's our superstar. <laughs> I mean, if it wasn't for Roxanne, I don't think I would have ever become an organ donor. Mm-hmm. Because once oh, you put wow. People, once you see the people yeah. that can be saved, mm-hmm. it's 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 a really nice feeling. And I, I became an organ donation donor because of Roxanne Thank and you. Lauren. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. We're lucky. We have some great people in this county, and we are so proud to say that we are the fastest growing uh, county for organ donation in uh, entire in New York State, and that's a that's a big thing. Yeah, and you have some record of, of recruiting, recruiting organ donors. <laughs> Chasing people all over the county. <laughs> there you go. You keep up that great work. You got it, and you do too. And okay. You, you know you got my vote, so oh, don't worry ever you. about that. <laughs> Thank you. You have Thanks a wonderful a heart anniversary today. Thank you Take so care. much. Thank you so much. I love you, girls. <laughs> love you too. All right. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm. You bye-bye. know, I, I think one, one of the uh, main points that I'd love to, to share is this crosses all barriers, mm-hmm. right, of faith and religion and, and race and, and race. whatnot. Absolutely. Um, just the lives that Michael touched and was able to save, uh, you know, from Chinese uh, gentlemen to to a Hispanic little girl and to, to a Jewish Roxanne, man, a Jewish I mean, man, just exactly. Everything. All of us, we every single one of us was completely different in religion, in race, in age. I mean, it's just that's why we love to tell this story at naturalization. Out of all the things I do, and you guys know I've done. 
tons of things. My favorite thing always is the naturalization ceremony. To stand on that stage and see people from 50 countries, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it's amazing. And they're smiling Absolutely. and they're happy and they have their flags and they're crying and they're happy to be Americans. And that's probably, my, it is my favorite thing mm. to do is speak oh, to naturalization. Oh, that's incredible. And then just to, you know, when they come by the first time to the table, they go, oh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. And when we finish with them, <laughs> they come <laughs> back to that table and sign up, and that's a beautiful thing. That's it is. The story thing. is very powerful. Yes, it, it is. It crosses all bridges. Of, uh, it uh, we're, all got, we're all created equal by God, and, and that's, yep. the, that's the, the shell of it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And who else is out there? Mark's still out there? Yes. Okay. You know, what I'd like to do is tell a couple of stories about Michael that I sure. heard. Absolutely. Because it so mirrors what you're doing, Roxanne. Mm -hmm. um, I asked his parents, I asked John and Jelaine, tell me about Michael. And John told the story that Michael was perhaps one of the fittest, physically fittest of the recruits at his Coast Guard boot camp. Mm -hmm. and, and then John said, and he usually finished tied for last in all the physical training exercises, which didn't quite make a lot of sense to me, and I asked him to explain it, and he said it's because he hung back to help out the mm. ones who were struggling the most. Amazing. Mm. 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 Isn't, isn't that a picture of what yeah. you're doing now, Roxanne? I hope so. I hope. I it hope is. So. It really is. And, and then one of his friends told me a story that they were working for a landscaping company together. They had worked at this home of an older gentleman who had asked them to repair his skylights. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't do it because they were working for the landscaping company, and they told the older gentleman that they couldn't do it because it wasn't on their work order, mm -hmm. that they had other jobs to do. So when they finished their work day, Michael said to his friend, now we can go help out the old gentleman. Mm, mm, they mm, went back mm. and they fixed the skylights. Mm. It's amazing. At the end of a of a ten hour work day in the middle of the summer, when they could have gone home and hung out and played ping pong, mm -hmm. Michael said, "Now's our chance to help this guy." This kind of guy he was. I'm, I keep hearing more wow. stories about him. He's <laughs> the kind of guy he was. We got to take one commercial here right now. Everybody, hold those lines. We'll be right back with you. Okay. Hello, sure. how are you doing today? Roxanne Watson is on a mission. Are you organ donor? She wants more people to register as organ, eye, and tissue donors. Yes, I am. Yay. My goal is to sign up the most people in the United States. <laughs> what drives her? Roxanne's own life was saved through the gift of a heart transplant, made possible by an organ donor. I decided that day that I was going to devote myself to the cause of organ donation and signing people up and honoring my donor by doing that. Now she's back to health, and she's a powerful force, helping to save lives every day through her work. Imagine what you can make possible by leaving behind the gift of life. Eight people can be helped with the major organs, and up to 50 people can be helped with a little bit of everything. And when you think about it that way, that you could help that many people, it's amazing. It really is. Learn more and sign up as an organ, eye, and tissue donor. Go to organdonor.gov. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Health Resources and Services Administration. Hello, we are back. Um, we have um, John Boville, Michael's uh, dad is here, um, Senator Carlucci, Mark Juddelson, the whole crowd is here. And uh, Senator Carlucci wants to say something. So I have this proclamation on behalf of the New York State Senate Woo! to honor Roxanne Watson on the occasion of the 10th anniversary of her wow. heart transplant. That and nice. it's exciting. You know, Roxanne's been up to the Senate chamber, to the Assembly chamber up in Albany, and has lobbied on a multitude of different uh, policies, funding, uh, all centered around this extremely important issue. So I just wanted to take a quick uh, minute, and I'm going to summarize this proclamation because uh, it is a little bit long, but I'm just going <laughs> to read a few things. So it goes, uh, honoring Roxanne Watson upon the occasion of the 10th anniversary of our heart transplant. Whereas it is the practice and the privilege of the New York State Senate to proudly honor remarkable people from around our great state who have managed to turn tragedy into success. Nice. And whereas attendant to such concern, I, New York State Senator David Carlucci, hereby honor Roxanne Watson upon the occasion of the 10th anniversary of her heart transplant on July 16th, 2010. 
And whereas Miss Watson received a new heart in 2010 and has been and has been on a mission to educate people about the life-saving value of organ donation through her work with the New York's Campaign for Life and Donate Life New York, she has personally signed up more than 11,000 potential donors believed to be a world record. Is, 11, <laughs> is that accurate? 11,571, but nobody's counting. 11,571. <laughs> oh, wow. That's so cool. <laughs> and then what's really cool is, you know, uh, Donna, uh, our uh, um, county clerk, was on the line, and she's talking about how she signed up. But I don't think she counts as one of the 11,571, <laughs> does she? <laughs> oh, she, does she? She, she does? does? We she count does. Okay, you count her? Because I think about all the you know the influence right yeah. it's the it's passing the legislation it's getting the funding it's uh making sure that those issues are addressed but then you never know yeah you don't how your example it's is going to impact someone that's true and i think about you know i've been at so many different events with roxanne and the stories that you tell and you know i've heard different snippets of the stories mm -hmm. at different times and i think about how wow you know i'm touched but I think about how it might have impact someone, yeah. and they tell someone, or just want. you know, you just never know. Yeah, you, you just don't. never know. So, Thank um, you. so it's just it's really fitting, and I'm just it, for me, it's an honor to know you. Thank you, so and much. to have worked and with vice you. Versa. We worked a lot together. But I tell the <laughs> story because it's you know it fits into no matter what we're trying to do, and obviously this is a worthy cause that we know will save lives. Uh, but it's that tenacity, it's that persistence, it's that commitment to yourself, right? You talk about being in the hospital bed and mm -hmm. making that commitment to yeah. you and to your creator to say, hey, if I get through this. Yep, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> and it's such an uplifting story. It's so awesome because it shows that any of us can, if we put our mind to it and if we have that goal, if we just put one foot after the other, you know, step by step, yeah. we can make a tremendous difference. And that's why I, I like to talk about that 11,571, <laughs> but we know it's far greater than that. The I impact so. is tremendous. We hope so. That, that's, why we, that's why we have this show. And I say it every week and I have to repeat it again. Thank you, Live On New York for your sponsorship but that's why we have this show and why we came to this station because it was important for us to you know be part of a community and that's what the station is all about and uh, we get to sh tell our stories nobody censors us tells us what to say and we're able to share with, with people all over the world uh, even though this is a local station we know for sure Emma you know, Australia is on. We know mm -hmm. Karen in UK is out there. We know people all over the United States are listening, and they're sharing their stories. Every week we have people get in touch with us to say they want to share their stories, and that's why we do this show. It's important. It's part of Michael's legacy. There's no question about it. This happened because of the gifts that Michael gave. And no other reason would I be sitting here. Or on radio, or on TV, any place, mm. you know, all the things that we're able to do because of Michael. And we want to show people that these are the things that happen to you when you give life. Your and think of the lives that you have saved throughout the, uh, the this journey and your excitement. So oh, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. It's, you know, like I tell all the time, and, and Senator Carlucci's heard it quite a few times, when I was in that bed... And that source, God, whatever it was, came to me mm. and said to me, you know, now you got a purpose. When I, I felt that I had that purpose, when I felt I had that purpose, yep. my life was easy. Mm. I mm. get up every day, and it really literally is easy. It's a matter of what am I going to do today to further organ donation and heart health. Those are my two loves, and I'm able to uh, do both of them every single day. So You're definitely an inspiration. Thank you so much, That's Roxanne. Important. What are, what are the next? What's the next decade look like? Oh, God. <laughs> it looks like a lot of stuff is going toward heart disease. I have to be honest. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not finished with organ donation. They go hand in hand for me. Yep. But it looks like I'll be doing a lot of work with Women Heart and American Heart Association. That's what's some of the going. What are some of the things that that you've learned over this journey of the ten years? I mean, obviously, it's a lot to fit into a mm -hmm. soundbite. But um, you know, what are the real takeaways? I mean, you've talked to 
you know, over the 11,571 people, we're just talking about the people that you were successful. Right. You had a lot of no's. <laughs> You yeah. had a lot of people that said, absolutely oh, yeah. not. Absolutely. But and then there were some people that came back and said, I changed my mind. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the good part. I think the first thing I learned was the numbers of people waiting for organs. That devastated me when I was in the hospital. Mm-hmm. And I realized there were so many people. You know, and even though I did get a heart, most people are waiting for kidneys. Yeah. So I learned a lot about the kidney world. Uh, with over 113, 114,000 people waiting right now, 90-something thousand of them are for kidneys. Mm-hmm. So I learned a lot about organ donation. I was an organ donor before mm-hmm. that, before I even uh, you know, became a recipient, because my mother was a neurological nurse oh, okay. in the same hospital I wind up going wow. to get my transplant. She worked at Montefiore Medical Center for 35 years. And she believed in organ donation mm. because she saw people in comas for, you know, forever. And so she always told us when we were a kid that this is what you need to do. And we were, we were donors. So that wasn't a big leap for us. And then the, the second most important thing I probably learned is about heart disease, mm. especially in the African-American community, that uh, it's, it's a, something that we suffer from yeah and it's it's a lot of reasons why it happens you know and nothing it's not blame some people are like oh I blame the diet or whatever I learned that it's not that you mm. might just be born mm-hmm. into a family that has it like my family the genetics yeah. right and we t- I took care of myself mm-hmm. I worked all my life you know I worked hard I took care of myself I was an athlete I was all of those things and I still got sick mm. so w- I learned a lot about heart disease and that's what I that's what I'm going to be working on as we we go into the future. Mm-hmm. Well, that's great. And what do you think it is in terms of when we talk about um, you know with organ donation? A lot of what we've talked about is just the awareness, mm-hmm. being cognizant. I always like to say what I think is the greatest thing, and why you've been successful is that personal connection that you're actually asking the question. Yes, uh, you personally ask. And when, when we did research and we passed some of the legislation that we passed in New mm-hmm. York, what we found in other states where they've mm-hmm. had high rates of success in terms of people enrolling in the program, mm-hmm. some of these departments of motor vehicles yes. and other, they personally ask the question. Every single person. And right. we try. We want to do that in New York, and we get mm-hmm. such pushback. Mm-hmm. I'd like to see that become yeah. a reality where. You personally ask, hey, would you like to be right. an organ donor? We, I know in New York, our culture, it's like, hey, get out of here. We're in and out. But, <laughs> Check the know, box. Get out of here. DMV, you know, you might be losing people. They're yeah. like, get me out of here. But Five beep, five hours, it, it turns you off. But you see some of these rates. It's like, why can't we emulate that? And you've done that. Mm-hmm. You said, I'm not going to wait for a law. I'm not going to wait till I get a foundation supporting me. I'm going to go out and do it today. Because yeah, we have to. Uh, when I was lucky enough to go spend some time in Texas, uh, to donate li- with the Donate Life Texas team and got to meet Joey Gase, uh, NASCAR driver, and go to go to the race and all that other stuff. I saw a place that is just like totally dedicated. They were literally having, you know, they had electronic swipers at, at NASCAR. Hmm. And they were literally walking up to people and saying, are oh, you an organ donor? And they go, no. And they were like, okay, get out your license. Let's hmm. do it. Just like that. And wow. people were just swiping their license, becoming organ donors. But it was that personal thing, like you yes. said. It was a person asking a person. Yes. It wasn't me looking at a paper and checking a box. Yes. Makes you think about it. Right. And they were like, oh. And then I was there and I had Michael's picture, which you guys know I carry for 10 years (laughs) now, every place I go. (laughs) And I was showing my picture. I was like, here, this is my donor. And they were like, well, who's that? And they didn't really understand what I was saying. They would say, your daughter? Right. No, I said, no, this is my donor. I have his heart. Hmm. And it would stop. Mm. Even if they were going to say no, they would stop and they would listen to the story. Right. And most likely they do sign up once you ask them. But it is that personal connection because this is a very personal thing. Right. And again, going back to why we started this show is we understood that. Mm-hmm. It was a very personal thing, and we invited people to come and tell their stories, and that's what we do. Every week someone tells their story, and we hope that that you know, influences people. We know that we get lots of, you know information and people feedback from all over the world that are listening but we want to make sure that people are moved to action right that's the main thing that's it it might take a little longer for some people Mm -hmm. but uh but you plant that seed and it starts to grow right exactly john we we don't have that much time left tell us what you want to tell us 
Oh, I was just thinking earlier, Senator, you were talking about the uh, technology and, yeah. and, and the advancement of medically. But uh, even with our advancements, there is no replacement of, of a personal, uh, of, of a real heart. Mm-hmm. And that, I think, is so, so real of getting the word out mm-hmm. that only a heart transplant can, can really fix and heal someone. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's true. It is totally true. And that's it. It's as we advance, you know, we become more sophisticated and more technological. Uh, it's still down to the basics that it's uh, it's going to take people making that decision mm-hmm. and having those hard conversations. Yes. That will ultimately because we can have the best doctors and the best technology in the world. But if we don't have people coming to that realization and making that decision, we really sure. don't have anything. Yep. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mark. Mm-hmm. Mark? You know, one, one final picture of kindness from the book. Okay. Was um, Michael was a devout Christian, mm-hmm. a practicing believer in Jesus Christ. One of the, donor, one of the recipients was Scott Taffet, uh, who received both of Michael's lungs. And Scott identifies himself as a Jewish person. Mm-hmm. Scott and his wife had decided not to have children because, because Scott's health was so impaired. And after um, Scott received Michael's lungs, his health was so improved that he and his wife Stacy decided to have children. Yes, that's powerful stuff, boy. And they, dis- they approached John and Jelaine to ask permission to name their firstborn child, to give their firstborn child's Hebrew name Michaela had to be named after Michael. That's amazing. Mm. amazing. And then at the naming ceremony at the synagogue, John and Jelaine and his and all of Michael's sisters attended that ceremony and sat with the boat with the with Scott's family mm-hmm. because they were all part of the same family. Right. Amazing. What a, what a beautiful day that was. And uh, you know, again, I can say that life continues to give life. Yes. And Absolutely. it's just, it's such a beautiful story. It is. It is. And we, we thank you for the story. We are always, every day, we thank you for Michael's heart. We thank your family for being so loving mm-hmm. and always so willing at a moment's notice <laughs> to, mm-hmm. to share his story. And, and you just never say no. And, and that says a lot about your family and about the love that Michael gave to all of us. And the five of us that I'm, I'm sure just as grateful, the other four just as grateful as I am sure. for the gift of life. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for checking us out. We have to go now. Uh, we'll have a link for this show later on, and you'll be able to uh, listen. Thank you. Bye, everybody. God bless you, Roxanne. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, Bye. everyone. Right. Bye-bye. AM 1700 WRCR, Ramapo, WRCR.com.